Fellow Ghanaians, good evening. This is the 17th time that you are kindly opening the doors to your homes, to me, to enable me brief you about the issue of COVID-19, the steps being taken by government to eliminate it, and the measures being implemented to ease progressively and safely the restrictions put in place to defeat the virus. We in Ghana have certainly come a long way and have made significant progress in combating the disease. The angst, fear, and panic exhibited by many, especially when the first two cases were recorded on our shores, have been replaced in recent weeks by a growing sense of optimism and renewed hope that we are on our way to winning the battle against the pandemic. The improvement in the situation is all thanks to the effectiveness of the measures put in place by government, the cooperation and support of you, the Ghanaian people, and most certainly by the grace of Almighty God. Nevertheless, I appeal to each and every one of you to continue to tread on the path constructed by government and follow religiously all the social distancing, mask wearing, and enhanced hygiene protocols. They are and will remain our weapons in the struggle against the virus. In the same manner, we have to remember to continue improving our fitness by exercising and eating well, patronizing our healthy Ghanaian foods, which will boost our immunity to disease and help us in the fight against the pandemic. When I delivered update number 16, exactly three weeks ago, the number of recorded active cases, that is persons with the virus, stood at 1,847. This number, as of Friday, 18 September, has reduced considerably to 507 persons. There are currently some regions in the country without active cases. Greater Accra, Eastern, Ashanti, and Central regions account for some 80% of the active cases. As of Friday, 18 September, 2020, the total number of tests conducted is 470,730. So far, a total of 45,258 persons have recovered, and 297 persons, a great majority of them with underlying illnesses, such as hypertension, diabetes, chronic liver disease, and asthma, have sadly died. In the face of these encouraging statistics, I know there are many who are wondering why I have not announced a complete return to normalcy in all aspects of national life, because they believe the figure suggests we have turned the tide in the fight against the virus. Yes, our death rate continues to be low, and our hospitals have mercifully not been overwhelmed as there are presently only 20 severe and critical cases. Indeed, there are a lot of empty beds in our treatment centers. In the isolation centers, there are virtually no patients under care. But truth be told, we cannot afford at this critical moment to throw caution to the wind and destroy the incredible amount of work undertaken by government, health officials, heroic frontline health workers, and members of the security agencies in bringing us this far. Now more than ever, we must be even more disciplined in our adherence to the personal hygiene, mask wearing, and social distancing measures that have become part of our daily routines. That is the way to eliminate the virus altogether. The experience in other parts of the world show us that the virus can return with a vengeance 
once you let your guard down. Fellow Ghanaians, in my last address, I announced the reopening of our international airport, Kotoka International Airport, signaling our gradual reintegration with the rest of the world. 16 out of the 23 airlines that operated in Kutuka prior to its closure have again commenced flights to and from Accra. As of yesterday, Saturday, 19 September, a total of 10,061 passengers had been tested at Kutuka. In spite of the requirement that all passengers must be in possession of a negative PCR test result, upon their arrival in Ghana, a test which should have been conducted not more than 72 hours before the scheduled departure from the country of origin. A total of 26 positive cases had been recorded from the tests at Kutuka. Let us pause for a moment and imagine what would have happened if these 26 positives had not been detected and had been allowed to mingle with the population. Even though the cost of 150 United States dollars per passenger for the mandatory airport COVID tests has been criticized in certain quarters, the value of the test in its speed, accuracy, and savings for passengers who no longer have to bear the cost of the 14-day mandatory quarantine in hotels has been clearly established. It is worth noting that a lot of people who have experienced it firsthand, the service being offered at our international airport, have praised the country for the innovation and far-sightedness on display at our airport. Let me assure you again that as President of the Republic, I will do everything in my power to protect you and stop the importation of the virus into our country or limit and contain its spread. This is my solemn commitment to you. Fellow Ghanaians, on Friday, 18 September, 561,674 JHS3 students completed the Basic Education Certificate Examination, BECE. SHS3 students also, on 5th September, wrote the last paper of the West Africa Senior Secondary Certificate Examination, WAXI. I am particularly excited at this development because despite the fears and genuine anxiety expressed by some and the criticisms proffered by some in the political space, these students have gone to school, studied, sat, and completed their examinations unscathed. Their forward march in life has not been interrupted. And by the grace of God, the predictions made by some of widespread infections and even deaths did not materialize. I pledged I'll be the last person to put the lives of students at risk, and I express my deep appreciation to all parents and guardians for the trust reposed in me and my government. I pray for the success of the students in their exams. As has already been announced, relevant arrangements and logistical deployments are being made for the return to school of second year, junior, and senior high school students. Continuing students in the University of Cape Coast, the University of Health and Allied Sciences, technical universities and some other colleges have returned to school and I've been reliably informed that adherence to, to protocols is high. Long may it continue. On Monday 14 September I extended by executive instrument the mandatory wearing of face masks by another three months. So until 14 December 2020 the wearing of masks remains mandatory, and the law enforcement agencies will be required to ensure this directive is respected by all. It has served us well in the fight against COVID-19, 
So I urge each and every one of us to wear our masks and do so correctly any time we leave our homes. It is the new normal requirement of our daily existence until the virus disappears. Towards the progressive easing of restrictions, the government has taken the decision to allow the resumption of training in all contact sports, taking into consideration the imminent participation of our national teams in international competitions. Indeed, some national teams have already been given the dispensation to begin training ahead of their international engagements. All sports people who are camped are to be tested regularly. Fellow Ghanaians, with respect to football, after due consultations with the Ghana Football Association, it has been decided that the Ghana Premier League and the Division I Football League will restart on Friday, 30th October, with a full regime of testing of the players, technical and management staff. No spectators will be allowed at the training centre and when actual competition resumes, seating at all stadia will be limited to 25% capacity to ensure social distancing. Wearing of masks by spectators at stadia will be mandatory. The restart of all other sporting competitions will be determined on a case-by-case -case basis, pending consultations between the Ministry of Youth and Sports and the respective sport associations. Private burials, still with a maximum of 100 persons, can continue to be performed. Our borders by land and sea will remain closed to human traffic until further notice. Beaches, pubs, cinemas, and nightclubs remain closed until further notice. All other institutions that have been cleared to function are to continue to do so in strict adherence to the COVID-19 protocols. And yano, unyangu pona daroma ni ema e ye ye ba e wo yare no ho. Nenso e dasu wo ho en koye enti yen koso endi di si se ye abai e di atu ho no so titu ufifia she mask. Kosibra obebefi. And no nebe boa ama ye to me a pam yare e free yem. Ayamime ni mo dromo ni bi ya no jogba ye hela befan. Shimu wa sweku hela kra no e wo. Wa ya no, ni wa ye hela bejiani to ni af amlamu kefoshi. Beni afe ni wa ye hela. Ninkunim. Titriye, ke wa shishinya, wa wo maske. Ka si beni wa ba kuwase. Ene jinoni ba wa wo, ni wa shishu hela akura ke jamaneni. Fellow Ghanaians, as we work to rid the virus from our shores, let us continue to remember at all times that this virus is no respecter of persons and has wrecked its havoc on every country on the planet. There are countries that are imposing lockdowns all over again. Others are imposing curfews, all in a bid to curb the onset of fresh infections and a second wave. Let us continue to look out for one another and remain each other's keeper. United and with one goal in mind, we will emerge victorious in the fight against COVID-19. Zero active cases must be the ultimate aim. My rallying cry to you all remains, this too shall pass, for the battle is the Lord's. May God bless us all in our homeland, Ghana, and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention, and have a good night.